Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be telling you the top 10 things beginners want to know how to do in Photoshop. Theme tune. That's a bit crazy today. Okay, so today I'm going to go through the top 10 things that beginners always ask how do I do this in Photoshop? Now I'm going to attempt to get through this in just 20 minutes. So I'm going to rattle through all these things. Now what's important for this is if you're not a beginner or you're not in the beginning stages of learning Photoshop, this probably isn't for you because you probably know how to do all of these things. Also, remember there's more than one way of doing each thing in Photoshop. So I'm going to be using one way here, which will be a method of doing it. But in Photoshop, there's always other ways of doing things, like three or four or five. So if you do it another way and that works better for you, awesome. You rock it. I use lots of other ways too. I'm just going to show you one version of each of these things today. And also, just remember, I can spend like an hour on each of these things that I'm going to teach today. I'm just going to try and condense it down into just a couple of minutes for each thing. So if I go too fast, just rewind and play it again. Also, I'm going to be having tutorials for every single one of these things and loads more on my channel. So if you're interested, give me a thumbs up to this video and definitely subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more videos coming in the future. Okay, so as we work through this, I'm going to be looking at it not as a technical side of things like this is how you do it, like these are all the different tools, instead I'm going to do it by task. So the things that you're going to want to achieve in Photoshop, I'll then show you the tools that allow you to do it. So if you want to work along with me on this project, head over to photosyncolor.com and you can get my entire training course and all of these source files, which is awesome. So are you ready? Strap yourself in because here we go for the top 10 things that beginners always want to know how to do in Photoshop. Right. So here we go, we're inside Photoshop CC and we have this image here. Now the number one thing that people always ask how to do is how do I remove blemishes? Now let's zoom in on this by hitting command plus. Now, I'm going to teach you lots of shortcuts in this, but remember if you're a beginner I might move too fast. So I'm holding space bar here so I can move my image around. Great, so we can see a few blemishes on the face, not very many. I wouldn't say removing anything which is permanently there, just things which are kind of temporary. So to do this, we've got a number of tools. There's the spot healing brush, which is on the side here. You can get to that just by hitting J. And all we're going to do is paint onto the blemishes and you can see Photoshop's going to reference somewhere else and it's going to get rid of those elements. Now, another way of doing this would be to use the one below, below, which is the healing brush tool. Now for this, you're going to actually select where Photoshop chooses to sample from by hitting option, then I'm going to click here, and then it's going to sample that section and move it just there. And I can move this around as I go, telling Photoshop how to do it. Now, I would usually do this on another layer, for, we haven't got to layers yet. I'm going to teach that in a minute. So let's just go around the image. People often forget to do the body. They just stick to the face. So she's pretty perfect. We can see we've got a wet mark just here because she was actually just in the pool before this where we were shooting. But that's pretty good for now. So that there is how to remove blemishes. All you have to do is select the spot healing or the healing brush tool on the side panel here. Okay, so let's go on to item number two. Now, item number two is how to crop a photo or image. This is really simple. Over on the side panel, we have the crop tool. And yes, it's the letter C. And all you have to do is you just drag this in for wherever you want to crop it. So we're going to crop this image above this waterline where she was in the pool. Now, important to note on this tool here, you have a delete cropped pixels option up here. If you select that, it's actually going to delete, okay, what was, it's going to delete these sections. If you leave this unchecked, that I would always recommend leaving it unchecked, I'll show you what happens. Hit return and it's going to crop that image. 
Now, if I select the move tool, which is this one up here, I can now move the image and you see it's kept those pixels. So what that allows me to do is if I want to, I can always reframe this image. So there we go. I'm happy with the crop. I'm happy with that. That looks really good to me. So that there is how to use the crop, how to crop and use the crop tool. Now, number three, this one's really important and one of the biggest things that we do in Photoshop and that is use layers. So let's explain what layers are. Essentially, we have a layer just here and if we were to paint on this with say the color white, so I'm just selecting the color white here, I'm using the brush tool up here and I'm going to increase the size of it to around this big and I'm gonna draw a scribble. Okay, so you can see I've created this here but now if I wanna get rid of this scribble, so for example, I was to go to the erase tool, well, I'm erasing the whole image away, so that's not gonna work. So instead of doing that, I can get rid of this, Command Z, and I can create a new layer by hitting Command Shift N, and that creates a new layer. And you can name the layer if you like, and hit OK. And you can see, that's just here. Another way of doing that is go Layer, New, and Layers just up here here, but Command Shift N is better. So now we've got a new layer. We can take the brush tool. Now I'm gonna quickly make an adjustment to my brush and I want to reduce my spacing down. I have a whole tutorial coming on the brush tool, but this is just gonna make it smoother. And I can create the scribble over her again. And now watch, I can turn this on and off, which is massively powerful. Or, for example, I could use the eraser tool and I can erase just sections of that scribble, which is massively powerful. So let's just, I'm just gonna get rid of the scribble. I'm gonna remake it. I'm gonna make it with a little bit of a smaller line and I'm gonna just script. Oh, I don't wanna go off the side of my page though. I'm just gonna scribble like so, great. So this is what we're left with here. And as we said, we can do that. So that is layers and I can create as many layers as I want, and I can also rearrange my layers. So let me show you how that works. Command Shift N for another layer on top, and now I'm going to create scribbles going in another direction, but we're gonna do them in orange. So here we go. I'm gonna scribble over the top there. Now this layer is on top of the white layer. So if I was to move this below the white layer, the scribble is now below the white layer. So we can see this is really, really powerful what we can do with layers. So that there is layers and how to paint on different layers. Now the next thing that people always get asked how to do is what are masks? Now this is really important. Let's get rid of the orange layer, we'll just work on the white layer. Now if I wanted to get rid of this and show the girl behind, all I would do is what I could do is come in and I could just rub out Make sure it's selected, rub out where that girl is. But I'm not gonna be very accurate by doing that and also I can't then get that back. That's been deleted from the layer. So instead I can apply what's called a layer mask. Now, to explain layer masks, you just click on the mask icon down here and it puts a, a layer mask on here. Now, anything where the layer mask, this is essentially sitting over the top of this, is white is where you can see that layer. But if it's black, so for example, if I was to paint here, if we watch what's happening, it's getting rid of that element and that section is now black down here. But what I can then do, if I hit X and make it a white brush, I can now paint that back in because I'm only hiding it, I'm not actually getting rid of it. Now you can always see what your layer mask is doing Okay, by hitting um, option and clicking on the layer mask. So I can see I left some black elements in there, like so. So option click and come back. So let's just show you a really easy way of doing this. I'm gonna draw on here with black a smiley face. Circle, circle, and a smiley face. Now if I'm gonna look at the mask, option click, you see this is, I've, that's what I've just drawn and that is how it's going to affect this thing here. Now I can invert this layer mask by hitting Command I, and now you can see what that's done is it's inverted my layer mask. Okay, so what we're gonna do for now is delete the layer mask, 
just by right clicking, hitting delete mask. And now we're gonna do something really clever. We're actually gonna come in here and we, well, in fact, we'll do that in a minute with masks because the next thing we're going to do, the next point we're gonna move on to, and this is move an object. This is what people want to do. This is item number six, move an object. So for this, we're gonna use a different image. Now to open another image inside Photoshop, you can either go Command O and that will bring up open and then you can just click on whatever you want to open, this image here, and hit open. And then it's gonna open it up and then it's, we've got a different color space, I can say that's okay. And now we've opened this image. Another way of doing that would be, I can take this and drag and drop it into this panel at the top and it's gonna open it up there. So this is what we've got the image now. And let me show you, by hitting Command Zero, I can make that full. But what I actually want to do is I want to, rep I want to what are we doing here? Remove an object. Now this is really easy. We're gonna make a selection, I'm gonna choose the lasso tool, and I'm gonna remove this tree. So all I have to do, I didn't do that very well, so I'm gonna go around the tree like so, great, and draw around it. So now I've made this a selection. So now what I can do is I can remove it by going edit, fill, and I'm gonna go for content aware. Now if I select this and hit okay, it's gonna analyze the image and figure out what it can put there instead. And there you can see it got rid of it and it did a fantastic job. Command D to deselect, but you can see it's actually left some fringing for me today. That's not a problem, because I can go back into the healing brush tool that we used earlier, remember when we did the blemishes, use the same technique, option click here, and I can just literally paint over that area. And now that tree, I've now removed the tree. So that's how to remove something. Let's try removing something else like this little girl just here. So all we have to do, draw a circle around her, and then we're gonna go edit, fill, content aware fill, hit okay, and you can see, deselect, it's just got rid of the girl completely. Brilliant. So that's how we can do that. I'm gonna hit Command Z to, to reverse that. Now, the next thing that I have on my list that people always want to do, and that's how to move an object. So not remove an object, just move it. So let's move the girl. So all we have to do, gonna draw a circle around her, and now on the side panel over here, we're just gonna take, sorry, let me come up here, and it's called the Content Aware Move Brush. So it's within all of this panel here. We're gonna select that, make sure it's selected to move, and watch this. I pick her up, and I can say, well, let's put her over here. And watch what happens when I let go. She's gonna disappear from here. Oh, it didn't do a very good job there. So I can hit Command Z. Let's try again. I can pick her up and I can drop her just over here. There we go, she's disappeared from here and she's arrived over here. Absolutely amazing. Command D and we've moved her. Now let's try it on one more thing. Let's move the ship. So to do that, we take the lasso tool. We're gonna our feathering was too high. That's why it had an issue the first time. And we're gonna draw around the ship. Now, exactly the same again, take the move tool. Pick it up like so, and we're gonna move the ship over here. When I let go, hit return, I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect, and it's moved the ship, and it's done a really pretty good job of that. So, that is how we remove objects and move objects. Now, we're on to number seven, and this one's really big. How to put something on a different background or change a background. Well, I'm gonna show you right now. So we're gonna take the girl and we're gonna put her on a different background. And this is really simple. All we have to do, we have to select her out of where she is. So she's on a gray background, and you may be thinking, well, she's on a plain background, so she's gonna be easy to remove. Now. Yes, that's right, because most of the time you're gonna plan, you know if you're going to remove somebody from a background. Now all I've done here is I've used the quick selection tool here and I've just gone around that and it did a really good job. Now if I hit Q, that's quick mask, it shows me what is selected and what's not. And you can see I've missed the hair here and I've got some background in. Well, not to worry, we can add 
or remove from the mast. So I'm going to remove from that mast area and we're going to paint over the hair and it's going to do a pretty good job of selecting the hair. So we can do it that way and it's done an okay job by hitting Q but we've missed all sorts of things. So at this point we're just going to go into refine edge and in we go. Now remember I'm going really fast here guys so I just want to get through as many things to show you all of these items that people want to do. So Let's look in here. We have the view mode so we can see what's selected. So this is the marching ants. I can see it on, on the, with the mask. I can see it on white. I can see it on, with just the layer left over. I can see black on white. So different views to see this. So I can see that I've missed all of this hair. So let's go to overlay. And what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to choose smart radius. And then I'm going to paint around the outside. Now watch this. This is powerful. I'm just going to paint like so, and then it's going to analyze all of this image, and it's going to have a look what it thinks is the background, and then it's going to start selecting the background, and it's going to do a far better job of actually making these selections. So let's go over the hair here, and then we'll go actually over all of this hair, and you can see it started detecting it, and it's going to start putting the strands of hair back in. Now, you would want to spend a lot more time doing this if you were to be actually doing this professionally. But if you just want to, for today, I'm just trying to show you the power of Photoshop and what you can do. Okay, so that's now a pretty good idea. Now let's show it on, um, on black. So you can see now we have all of this hair has been selected far, far better. There we go. It's not perfect, but it will do. So now we've made our selection, we hit OK, and then we turn this into a mask. Now remember how we masked the squiggles? We just hit the mask button. And now you can see we've masked her out. So if we want to mask her in, we go Command I to inverse our mask, and there she is. She's now in here, but her background is not. So before we go any further with this, I'm going to show you a really neat little trick. Where we have these squiggles here, what we can now do is move this layer behind and now the squiggles are behind her. And that's what's really powerful and really cool about layers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch out this background. Now I've got a choice. I can either pick up this background and put it behind her here, but we're actually going to do it the other way. We're going to delete the orange one and just keep the white squiggle. We're going to pick up these two layers, like so, drag them into the other document, and then drag it down into the image. You must always end here. And then when you let go, it's going to drop it off just there. Now, we can click the Move tool, and we've got those two layers selected, and now I can move her around. So let's resize her a little bit. Okay, I think she looks pretty cool just there. Let's hit enter and now we can see, let's hide the squiggle, we can see we've put her on a different background and it's not perfect but it's pretty good. She looks pretty awesome. So that's how you change the background of somebody, okay, um, or something. You could do this to all sorts of different things. So point number eight and this is adjustment layers. Now this comes in the adjustment panel over here or you can go view, sorry, uh, window, and then select adjustments and this will appear. Now what we're gonna do is we can do all sorts of things to this image. So for example, we can add a curves layer and this is gonna affect absolutely everything because we're gonna move it to the top and it's gonna affect everything that we have in this image. So I'm gonna go to my red channel and I'm gonna lift my reds, okay? Now you see it's starting to all blend together and I really like that. Now let's add another one. We're going to go for color balance. And for this, I'm going to go highlights. I'm going to add some nice reds and some yellows to my highlights just a little bit. And then my shadows, I'm going to add some cyan and some blue. Great. So now let's, we can turn these on and off and see how those adjustment layers have worked. And they will work basically on an image. As we can see, we can do all sorts of things. And there are many adjustment layers that you might want to use, so I definitely recommend going in and playing around with that. 
So now we've got our adjustment layers done and everything. What I do want to do quickly down here is I don't want this to be white. So if I double click on a layer, it's gonna bring up my layer style. And I'm gonna go for a color overlay. Ooh, and it's gone orange. I actually really like that. So we're gonna go, okay. And there we go. Now we have this and I can make it bigger. So we've got this nice squiggle that's going on behind her. Hit okay. And I can even bring back my opacity if I wanted to let these shine through a little bit. I'm gonna leave it on 100%. Great, okay, and now this brings me to point number nine, which is what people always wanna do, add text to an image. So let's go ahead and add text. Now we're gonna add the text above the girl, so we're gonna select that layer, then we're gonna hit, we're gonna select text over on the side. Now text is really easy, we just click onto the image and then we can just go ahead and type. So we're gonna go for summer feeling with one of those apostrophes at the end. So it's like not feeling, feeling, because it's cool. Now, if we're on the move tool, we have this layer selected. We can now come over here and select the text tool or character tool. If you don't see that, you go window and you select character. And now I can change all of these elements. So I'm gonna make it nice and big, like so. That's a little bit too big. Pull it back, there we go. I'm gonna make it white. Great, I like that. This is starting to look really good. In fact, I'm not gonna make it white. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna select something from my image so I can go, oh, I like the sand color, for example. Or actually, I like this turquoise blue one up there. That's good. Hit okay. Okay, so that looks really nice and it's kind of blended. It's not perfect, but we get the idea. We can then come in here and we can choose whatever we want our font to be. I'm actually happy with the font that it already is. Now it's a little bit in the background, so I'm gonna double click on this layer again, brings up layer styles. I'm gonna hit stroke, and it's giving me a nice white stroke on that. Maybe not that big, ah, something like that. That's looking pretty good. Hit okay, so now I have text on this layer. And I really like the way that this has started to come together. Now. We've got this ready. We kind of like how it goes, but I think this background is a little bit, bit, it's popping out too much. So I can go background, I'm gonna add a blur to this. So this is my filters up here. Now there's a lot going on inside filters, so you can have a go, but I'm gonna go blur and Gaussian blur. And all I'm gonna do is so I can make this essentially blur in and out. So I'm just gonna add a nice little blur so it looks like it's in the background, somewhere around there, looks great. Hit okay. Brilliant. So now we've got our nine points that we've done. We've removed blemishes, we've cropped our image, we've created multiple layers, and then we've masked out some of the layers. And then what we've done is we've removed the tree, so we've moved the little girl, in fact she's back here now, um, but we did move the boat over here. Then what we've done, changed the background and put the girl on here. What we've then added adjustment layers, so we've got our curves and our color balance, and we can add a photo, we can adjust something else up here, you know, we can adjust all sorts of different things if we wanted to. I just added a channel mixer for fun. So we've done our adjustment layers, then we've added some text, which was number nine, and point number 10 is saving or exporting. Now this is really simple to do. All you have to do is you hit Command S, and what it's going to do is it's gonna bring this up and it's gonna save it as a Photoshop. Now, saving as a Photoshop is gonna be a really large file with all of these layers contained inside it. So it's gonna be a huge file and you're gonna be able to go in and re-edit. But maybe you wanna share this on the web. Maybe you wanna do something with this. Well, that's great too, because if you go to um, Command Save again, and then you can change it at the bottom to JPEG and it's gonna save it as a JPEG just by hitting save and it will then say what quality, let's go 100%. And then that's gonna save as a completely flattened file just like this that you can then put on the uh, wherever you want. If you want it to go to the on, online, I'd recommend going edit, sorry, file, and then you can go save as like this or what you can do is go Command Option Shift Save, and this brings up the Save for Web dialog. 
okay, which is this one, where you can turn it into whatever format you want, a JPEG, and you can change the size of the image, and you can change the quality of the image over here, and it will tell you how, down here how big a file size it's going to be. Anyway, now we've got all of that done, that is the 10 points. Whew. So that was a little bit over 20 minutes, but we got through 10 massive points in Photoshop. Now remember, I'm gonna have tutorials coming out for every single one of these points, so definitely stay tuned in the future and watch all of those tutorials. Definitely like this video and subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more coming. I'm absolutely exhausted after that one. I'm sure you are too. Thank you so much for watching. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune. Ooh. Mm -hmm.